Hi, this is Larry, the Cheapskate Woodworker. This is the foot switch I made for my router table, and it can also be used to control a lathe or maybe even a table saw. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can make your own. Before we get started, I want to point out that you are on your own with this build. I am not responsible for any accidents, damages, or injuries caused by you using this video. If you are the least bit hesitant about following these instructions, please get someone with a basic understanding of electricity to make your foot switch for you. Before you make your foot switch, you'll need to determine the amperage of the power tool you'll be using it with, as you'll need to use the right gauge of wire. You can usually find the amp rating for your power tool either in the tool's manual or marked or stamped on the tool itself. Here's a close-up of my router's info label, and as you can see, it's rated for 12 amps. Here's a chart that shows the gauge of wire needed for a particular amperage. Keep in mind that the smaller the gauge number is, the bigger the wire will be, and therefore the higher amount of amperage it can safely carry. Using a smaller gauge of wire than what your tool's amperage rating calls for will result in the tool trying to pull more amperage through the cable. This could cause the cable as well as your power tool to overheat and possibly become damaged. Looking at the chart here, you'll see 12 amps appearing in two rows. To be on the safe side, we're going to use 14 gauge cable to build our foot switch. Let's take a look at the materials we'll need. Two feet of 14 3 stranded cable. Now you can make your cable as long as you want to, but I'm just using two feet myself. You need a so-called decorator wall switch, two NM connectors, one 4x4 square metal electrical box, one one gang square metal electrical box cover. Now I chose metal over plastic for the box and cover as I don't want them to crack and also because there is no up to code way to secure the cables as they come out of the box. You'll also need one three wire plug a three wire connector, a package of 16 through 14 AWG blue insulated spade terminals. Four will be needed for this project. Not shown in this picture, you may need two number six nuts and washers. The tools you'll need are flat blade and Phillips head screwdrivers, a cable cutter, an electrical tester, a wire stripper, a box knife or X-Acto knife, and a wire crimping tool. If you're not sure what these materials and tools are, there are links below in the description to the Lowe's and Ace Hardware websites where you can see exactly what they are and what they look like. Now you don't have to buy any of these from Lowe's or Ace. Uh, those links are not affiliate links. I do not make any money from them whatsoever. I've provided them to you for informational purposes only. Okay, let's start the build. Determine where on the metal box you want your male plug and female connector to go. Mine will have the female connector coming out through the top of the box and the male plug coming out of the right hand side. The idea here is to keep the cables from being directly under your foot when you use the foot switch. Here I've knocked out the holes in the top center and lower right of the metal box and have attached an NM connector to each hole. Now take the mounting screws and the white paper washers off of the switch and set them aside. You'll have to cut off the areas circled in red so the switch will fit under the box's cover. Use the box cutter or X-Acto knife to remove about four to five inches of the outer insulation from the middle of the cable try to not cut into the insulation of any of the three inner wires. All right, time for a little basic electricity. The white wire is the neutral wire. The black wire is known as the hot wire and the green one is our ground wire. Cut the hot or black wire and the green or ground wires in half. Because we're using stranded cable, we need to put a spade terminal on each wire that will connect to the switch strip off just enough sheathing on each green and black wire so that they will fit into the inner barrel of the connector. 
and then firmly and tightly crimp a blue spade terminal to each one. Tug on each wire to make sure the crimp is tight. If a wire comes out of the terminal when you pull on it, throw that terminal away and crimp on a new terminal to the wire. Now run one end of the cable through the top hole of the box and the other end through the hole on the side. Next, attach the blacker or hot wires to the gold colored screws on the right hand side of the switch and attach both of the green or ground wires to the ground connector on the left side of the switch. Again, tug on all the wires to make sure they don't come off. Notice how the black or hot wires are on the switch's right hand side in relation to the top of the box. This ensures that when the upper part of the switch is pressed down, the switch will be on, and when the bottom part is pressed down, the switch will be turned off. This makes it easier to turn the switch off with your foot. Next, attach the switch to the underside of the box cover using the screws you removed earlier. You may have to cut more off of the top and bottom of the switch's mounting tabs so it will fit under the box cover. Those white paper nuts that you removed earlier can act as nuts to hold a switch to the plate, but they will not be tight. You probably want to use actual number 6 nuts to securely hold the switch in place. Now pull the cables through the box and screw down the cable hold downs on the NM connectors to keep the cables in place. Make sure to clamp them down on the outer sheathing only. You should not have any white, black, or green wires coming out of the box. After they are firmly tightened down, attach the box cover to the box. Now it's time to attach the female connector and the male plug to the ends of the cable. Here's the layout of the female connector. Notice that the neutral white slot is the tallest or widest one. The hot or black slot is the shorter or narrower one. And of course the lower round one is the green ground. Now let's take a look at the male plug. The white neutral wire and the black hot wire are here and the green ground wire goes on the bottom prong. Attach the female connector to the cable coming out of the top and the male plug to the cable coming out of the side. Now it's time to test our foot switch out before we put it into service. Plug the tester into the connector and then plug the male end into power. If you've wired everything correctly, there should be no LEDs at all lit when the switch is in the off position. And when it's in the on position, both of the yellow LEDs should be lit. If you don't get these exact results, then check your wiring. Do not use your switch until it passes the test. If everything is okay, your foot switch is now ready to use. And thanks for watching. If you liked this or any of my other videos, please take a moment to like them and maybe even leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe so you'll know when I have posted a new video. So until next time, this is Larry, the Cheapskate Woodworker. May your sawdust be fine and your splinters be few.